It's a pleasure to call Elliot Colborne to make his maiden speech. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker, and it's a pleasure to be making my maiden speech as the new member for Carshalton and Wallington. Yeah. And it is to those people of my constituency that I want to thank, first of all, um, for putting me in this, the mother of all parliaments. Uh, and I want to also thank all honourable members who have made their maiden speeches so far today and throughout this week. You've set the bar incredibly high, but I will do my best. Yeah. Uh, but before I go on, I have to pay tribute to um, the man who came before me and who represented Carshalton and Wallington for 22 years, and that was Tom Brake. Uh, he served in this House since 1997, holding many positions in his own party and in the Coalition. And whilst we didn't agree on everything, as an LGBT plus person, I will always be grateful in particular for voting in favour of same-sex marriage in 2012. But, Madam Deputy Speaker, to many people, Carshalton and Wallington seems like nothing more than a suburban commuter town with not much history. But those of you who like your history will be delighted to know that there is a tale to tell. And like all good TV dramas, it involves power, intrigue and even a royal fallout. <laughs> Carshalton itself was rumoured to be called Caesar's Horton, or uh, Caesar's Town in ancient times, because of the belief that the Roman Emperor once pitched out camp there. But during an excavation of what is now the Bennington Sewerage Farm, it was discovered that rather of hordes of Roman lesions, it was rather a Roman bathhouse that occupied the site. Uh, but if you fast forward to the Tudor period, I know my friend the Leader of the House will be very excited to hear this section. Uh, Carshalton and Wallington was home to the Carew family, and Carew Manor remains on that site today, which is the only Grade 1 listed building in my constituency. And this was home to Sir Nicholas Carew, who was a favour of Henry VIII's until he was executed for treason in 1539. <laughs> uh, but it was here that the king, then king, spent time with Anne Boleyn whilst awaiting his first divorce. But <laughs> luckily, their daughter walked that same trail, and Sir Walter Raleigh is rumoured to have walked that trail with their then Queen Elizabeth. Uh, unfortunately, he was beheaded by James I in 1618. <laughs> it is rumoured that his severed head was kept by his wife and is buried to this day somewhere under Beddington Park. <laughs> However, you'll be pleased to know that my favourite memory of our fabulously beautiful local park was when my other half, Jed, who's in the public gallery, um, asked me to, uh, to marry him. Um, I was reliably informed that I may have read the, met the same fate as Sir Walter had I said anything but yes. <laughs> uh, but turning back to the subject of today's debate, I'm delighted as a former NHS worker to be talking about health and social care as something which is incredibly important to me and my constituents. And you've been lucky that you've heard about my local hospital, St Helia, already from a very early contribution in this debate, so you should know all about it. Uh, but to elaborate, uh, after decades of warnings of potential downgradings and the threat of even total closure, thanks to the Conservatives in government, we now have the go-ahead for an over £500 million worth of investment into St Helier and Epsom hospitals. That is half a billion pounds to shore up this hospital, both of the hospitals, bring all of the unusable parts of them back into use, but most excitingly, build a third brand new hospital in our area to provide yeah, acute yeah, services. Yeah, yeah. This is incredible news for local patients and something that I know my honourable friends and members for Sutton and Cheam, my constituency neighbour, uh, but also those for Rygate, Wimbledon and Epsom have been campaigning, to, campaigning for for a very yeah, long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, however, this funding isn't uh, for sure. The consultation on the site of the new hospital has just been launched. But unfortunately, there is still a group locally who seem to think that the hospitals don't need any funding, that for some reason £500 million means that you're going to close the hospital, and that actually all these services are going to go in the next couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. Madam Deputy Speaker, nothing could be further from the truth, and nothing puts our hospitals more at risk than irresponsible scaremongering yeah. about our health services. I make the pledge to my constituents and indeed to the constituents of every single constituency that, covers, that is covered by our local NHS Trust that I will work with constituency neighbours when they're willing to ensure this investment gets delivered, that we fight off the scaremongers and finally put to bed a political football that has been raging for over 50 years. Yeah. 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 But health is about much more than just hospital buildings. As a former NHS worker and those of us in this chamber who have backgrounds in the health service will know that a person's overall health and well-being is down to so much more than just the quality of and access to 
and at A&E Hospital. It also depends on your housing, where you went to school, what work you have and the local environment. And these are factors that I'm glad to see the government has recognised in the Queen's speech. In other words, every single part of our lives affects our overall health and wellbeing in some way. And every single government department, I hope, will bear that in mind with the decisions that it makes. Investing in the NHS is not just the right thing to do, but underpins the very ability of our country to reach its full potential. By looking after our, um, the health of our people, we are looking after the health of our nation and giving all of us the chance to prosper in the modern world. Madam Deputy Speaker, St Helier is just one of many campaign issues that I was elected to serve as the Member of Parliament for Carshall and Wallington just a few short weeks ago. That includes things like local train services, such as opposition to the poor council's decision on parking and to provide a first-rate education and protect air quality. I will get to work immediately to deliver on those promises, to move our country forward and, Ms. Madam Deputy Speaker, I would dare say, get to work. Yeah.